Hello. Uh, we are delighted to have with us uh, Gurcharan Das. He's uh, editing an anthology of books on Indian business and economics. Um, it starts several centuries ago, uh, medieval, pre-medieval, and it ends around the time of independence. And this is a period on which there's been lots written in terms of scriptures, in terms of accounts by various people, both Indian as well as outside the country. But I don't think there's ever been an effort to put all this together in simple language and also in the form of an anthology. So through Penguin, uh, this work is being done by Mr. Das, and uh, he's the editor of this anthology, and we'll be having a discussion on the history of business in India. Here are the four books for the benefit of viewers who would like to see them. The first one's on the Arthashastra. Uh, the second one is on the merchants of Tamilakam, which is Tamil Nadu. The third one is on the East India Company, which we shouldn't forget was a business enterprise first and foremost. And the last one is on the three merchants of Mumbai. Mr. Das, thank you very much for being with us. Let's start over the beginning. How did this idea come about? Well, this came about when somebody in Penguin was discussing with me about the great business ideas that have emanated out of India, a country with six, with 5,000 miles of coastline and which was once a great trading nation. And so when, when she asked me to be general editor of this series, it was very clear to us from the beginning that we wanted this to be a serious project. So I wanted to get the very best scholars. I also wanted this to be text-based. Text-based means like the first volume, uh, <clears throat> the Arthashastra, that um, we wanted the, 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 the sources. We wanted to mine the classical and the medieval literatures of India as well as well as inscriptions and other sources, historical sources. So, um, so I got, I mean, Tom Troutman, who wrote the first, this volume on the Arthashastra, is perhaps the greatest authority in the world. He was at the University of Michigan in Arpa when I gave him a phone call, and it took me a few weeks to persuade him. Uh, he's the person who wrote a book in the 1970s proving, trying to prove that Chanakya and Kautilya could not have been the same person. And, and so uh, the interesting thing about, uh, about our series is that we raise questions that are relevant to today. I mean, for example, in my foreword, I've written a foreword to each, about a 10, 15 page uh, foreword to each volume. I raise the questions such as the, the notion of property. What was it? Because in many countries, the king owned all the or property. Everything. That's right. But in India, the Arthashastra says very clearly to the king that you don't own the kingdom. You have a bhaga, and it's shat bhaga. Shat bhaga means one-sixth. So the, in other words, that is the... Uh, that is the moral, the right tax rate for a, for a kingdom. And so whenever kingdoms had higher tax rates, such as in the Mughal Empire, when the tax rates went up to 40 and 50 percent, constantly the Mughal emperor was told that the, 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 right, the righteous tax rate is 15 percent. And the Arthashastra, the prince, the, the advice that Kautilya gives to the prince is that if you overtax your merchants, you will lose your tax base because they will go to the neighboring kingdom. But that's a lesson that India pretty much forgot for around 40, 50 years, 40 right? 40 years. And, and even today, I mean, our tax rates during Indira Gandhi's time had gone to 97.5%. The idea is clearly not to be academic about it, right? It, no. it, 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 it's and in fact, that's one of my challenges as the general editor of this 15-volume series, that it is to force the, these academics to write in a, in a lively way 
and we give them good editors, good uh, sub-editors to make sure that their language doesn't become, that they're not talking to each other and they're talking to ordinary people.